Welcome to another LHB topical discussion. Does God exist? And if so, is there any evidence for his existence? Are we all just a product of a accidental Big Bang? Well, I believe that there is evidence for a creator. And I believe that that creator is the God of the Bible. And there's plenty of evidence for our faith. You see, we don't have a blind faith like so many of the atheists like to believe that Christians hold on to. We have evidence for our faith, and God has given us evidence for our faith. You see, the evidence of a creator is his creation. It's that simple. You see, atheists and evolutionists they have a problem, and the problem is the beginning. You see, the evolutionists will say, well, you know, we all got here by an accidental explosion called the Big Bang. Well, we have a couple of questions. Um, what exploded, and where did the materials come from that exploded? What banged? You see, they say that nothing exploded, you know, and here we are. Well, let me, let me tell you something. That takes great faith to believe. So evolution is a religion. It's not a science, by the way. It's called the theory of evolution. It's not a science. Okay, It's not based in reality or fact. It's a, a, a made-up concept. Okay, There's no evidence for nothing exploding, and here we are. The creationist, however, says, in the beginning, God. You see... You either have a creator, or you have an accidental Big Bang where nothing exploded, and here we are, by chance. Well, uh, that's no different than saying, you know, a hurricane went through a junkyard and put together a 747. You're going to have to take great faith to believe in that. That's impossible. But let's take a look at scripture and see what God says about creation and the evidence that he has given for his existence. In Romans 1, starting at verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. Everybody knows there's a God. God has shown it to everybody. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Look, God says that his, the evidence for him is his creation. Just look around. You know, people always you know, ask, oh, well, if there's a God, I want to see a miracle. Well, all you got to do is open your eyes. We're living in a constant miracle. The universe, the stars, the suns, the, you know, uh, the, the rotation of the earth, the planets not colliding into each other, you know, order in the universe. Order in the human body. Go down to the DNA. They communicate with one another. They repair damaged cells. They reject cells. They do repair on the body. You know, it's amazing the evidence that's here for a creator. But people, as in the scripture that we just read, they glorified him not as God. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. Even though they know the truth, they deny him. That's what I call being dumb on purpose. All the evidence is there, but they choose to be dumb and blinded. You see, they don't want there to be a God because if there is a God, then we are responsible to that God. We are morally responsible to that God. We will be held accountable by that God. That God may have rules like thou shall not. You know, so they don't want there to be a God because of his righteousness, his holiness and their sinfulness. But not wanting there to be a God does not make it magically happen. I could stand in traffic all day long in rush hour in the middle of the highway and say, I don't believe in cars. I don't believe in traffic. 
I don't believe in rush hour. I guarantee you, rush hour and traffic and cars still believes in me. Same thing. You could take me on top of a building and I could say I don't believe in gravity and step off. Gravity still believes in me. So the evidence for God is all over. The heavens declare his glory. I remember when I was an unbeliever, uh, before I was saved, I, I looked up. I remember as a young teenager standing in my mother's backyard and uh, it, the sun was going down and the stars were starting to come out. And I just looked up as an unbeliever and said, there has to be a God. I knew just by looking around at creation that there had to be a creator. It's like when you look at a painting, how do you know that that painting had a painter? Even if you've never seen the painter. The evidence is the painting. You see, the painting didn't magically evolve from nothingness. Someone purposely put it there with design and a beauty about it where when someone looks at it, they'll say, wow, that artist did a marvelous job. It was the same thing with creation. You look at the sun, the moon, the stars. You look at the DNA. You look at the animals. You look at all creation from large to small. And you have to realize that there is a God. Now that we established that there is a God, how do we know that the right God to worship is the God of the Bible? We know that the God of the Bible is the right God because of one word, prophecy. Check out the scripture. In Acts 15, 18, it says, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Here goes Isaiah 46, 5 through 11. This is God speaking. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? They lavish gold out of the bag and waste silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith and he maketh it a god. Basically he's saying they make idols. They fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him and set him in his place. And he standeth from his place shall, not, shall he not remove. Yea, one shall cry unto him, yet can he not answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Basically he's saying that Human beings make false gods, they make idols out of stone and wood, and they have to carry these gods around because these gods can't move. Remember this, and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O you transgressors. Remember the for former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Check this out. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. You see, we know who the right God is because it's only the right God that can tell the future. You see, the God of the Bible uh, said so many prophecies, and all of them have come to pass to date. There's still future ones that are yet to come to pass, but all the ones to date, especially concerning Israel. Think about this. The Bible prophesied that Israel would be scattered to the four corners of the earth. They've been scattered. They were scattered for 2,000 years since A.D. 70 when the Romans overthrew them and renamed the land Palestinia. After, the, to, after their ancient enemies, the Philistines. See, Palestine is, it, it was never a land called Palestine, by the way. It's always been, before Israel, it was Canaan, Canaanite. The Canaanites lived there. It was Canaan. Okay? So, after Joshua Caleb went into the land, it was named Israel. According to another prophecy God gave them, which was fulfilled. And it's been the Jews' homeland from that point on. Now, they, they haven't been in it because of disciplinary reasons. God has scattered them to chasten them. But he did promise he would bring them back. And guess what? May 14th, 1948, God did just that. He brought Israel back to the land, their ancient land. 
Okay? It was never called Palestine. You'll never see it in the Bible, never see it in history. The Romans named it Palestine as a mocking tool to represent their ancient enemies, the Philistines. Remember David and Goliath? You know, Goliath was a Philistine? Okay. So the land rightfully belongs to the Jewish people. That, that is set in stone in God's eyes. You, that's not going to change, and no one's going to drive them out of the land. Now, the point is, only God who knows the future can say that with 100% accuracy. The Bible says, shall a nation be born in a day? Israel was born in a 24-hour period. May 14th, 1948, bam, they were declared a nation again. You see, we know there's a creator because of the creation, and we know who that creator is because of prophecy. No other religious book, the Bhagavad Gita, the, the Quran, the Hindu Vedas, none of them dares to make prophecies. You know why? Because they're false. The true God is the God who can make, who can make prophecy and can see the future, therefore let you know what's going to happen before it does. So we have ample evidence, my friends, for a creator, and we do know who that creator is. There is no excuse. You see, I don't think there's anything, any such thing as an atheist. No, I, I believe they're, they want to be atheist, but they're not. Because in their hearts, they too know there's a God. Just like I said in Romans, God has shown it to every human being in their heart. There's no excuse. No one can say, I didn't know. I don't care if you live in a remote island. God has put the heavens in the sky as a testament to his creative power. He has given us this human body that the Bible says is fearfully and wonderfully made. So my friends, take heart. There is a God and he is knowable. There's evidence for him. And we know who that God is. So, with that evidence, if you do not know the true God of the Bible, the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, take the time to know him. Call on Jesus Christ today to save you from your sins. He says he will never leave nor forsake you. And all that come to him, he will in no wise cast away. You see, we need a Savior. We're all sinners. And God demands the death penalty. And con the consequences for that is eternity in hell. So, my friends, God sent his own son to save us from that doom. Don't waste or squander the opportunity of salvation that he's given each and every single one of us. There's no excuse. There is a God, and you can know him. And the evidence is all around us. God bless you, my friends.